Hey guys, welcome to Castle's Corner. I'm Coach Castle, and today we're going to be going over the resistance curve, what it is, why it's so crucial to understand this if you're going to be exercising, what is mechanical disadvantage, what is mechanical advantage, again, why they're important, and overall how muscles work, why this impacts your training, and why you've been training incorrectly your whole life. Um, yeah, so let's get on to blowing your mind. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is the resistance curve. Now, the resistance curve is simple to explain, but I find it is better with visuals. So, let's go ahead to the visuals. I finally completed my lovely machine here. It's very simple, I'll go through it again. This is one lever, the forearm. This is the second lever the upper arm, the humerus. These rubber bands will represent your two bicep muscles. As you can see, they connect at one point up top, this is the origin, and they connect at one point, the bottom, the insertion. The reason this is important is because people will tell you you can train one part of the bicep more than the other. This is fiction, it is not true, it's a lie. They connect at one point, and they insert at one point. Muscles can only pull towards their origin. If I was to give you a rope, tell you to tie it around your refrigerator, could you pull that refrigerator in any direction other than towards yourself? No. This is how muscles work. In that case, you would be the origin the rope would be the muscle, and the place it was tied on the refrigerator would be the insertion. They can only pull insertion to origin. All muscles pull, no muscles push. Now that we got that out of the way, the reason I chose to use rubber bands is very simple. As the weight lifts, they relax. Okay, That's important because there's a question coming up at the end later. So, let's get into the demonstration here. I simply have a scale, a luggage scale, very simple, you can buy it anywhere. I had to buy an extra heavy duty one, as a matter of fact, due to the, this demonstration I'm about to perform. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to see the numbers, but I'll call it out for you. So if I go ahead and take this, I attach it, the same place your wrist would be, make sure it's level. This would be a 100% active lever, and here, at the joint where the wrist would be, you will be holding 4.8 pounds. Now, that's great. The problem is, that is not where your muscle connects. Your muscle, your bicep, it doesn't connect here. Where does it connect? It connects way back here, about four centimeters, well, depending on how big you are as a person, about four centimeters to an inch or whatever off the center here, okay? So, if we go to the place, where the muscle actually connects, and we lift it up, suddenly we find it requires thirty-one pounds of resistance to perform that feat. Now, again, this is important because muscles they do not pull on the weight in your hand. They pull on the lever that is holding the weight in your hand. So if I was to give you a five pound weight, tell you to hold it in your hand, start down here, pick it up and curl it and hold it right here, you could probably do that for a long time. How about in the same scenario, I give you a 10 foot stick, I put the five pound weight at the end of that stick, start with the stick on the ground, I tell you to do the exact same motion, however now your lever has been extended an extra 10 feet. I do not believe you'd even be able to pick it up. That's because your lever is magnifying that five pounds. That five pounds is no longer five pounds, it's significantly more. Your forearm is the same thing. It is a lever, and it magnifies depending on the length of your forearm. So, for the purposes of the demonstration, it is important you understand that. Next thing we're gonna talk about is 
the resistance curve and how muscles are stronger when they're elongated or stretched and weakest when they're contracted. So in the case of a bicep curl, when you're down here, 180 degrees, there is no load upon the bicep. However, as soon as you take it out of 180 degrees, even a little bit, it requires a great amount of strength, of effort to perform that. However, when you get here, it is significantly easier. Therefore, your strongest right here, or sorry, not strongest, but this is 100% active lever, rather. And that's because the bicep is now pulling straight up, as opposed to the bicep having to pull from a disadvantaged angle. I'm about to get into that with this demonstration here. So it's important to understand that though. So at the top point of the bicep contraction, it's at its weakest. Now it's weakest because your muscle fibers have bunched together and they have shortened. Therefore, there's no more room for them to contract. And it's strongest when they're stretched out and they have to pull from this disadvantaged angle. And of course, you go through the full range. So it starts off the muscle being strongest. This is true for all muscles in the human body, by the way. I'm not talking about the bicep, but it's true for all muscles in the human body. Starts up being the strongest, ends up being the weakest. Okay? So we already know at this point where I'm holding the scale, that's what it's reading, 4.8. Okay? This is a 100% active lever because it's at 90 degrees or it is parallel with the ground, perpendicular to gravity. Gravity is very much important when you're exercising, guys. That's why we're talking about physics. So let's get into the demonstration. I'm going to take my little machine here, slide it over. I'm actually going to hook it up to my cable machine. The reason I'm going to hook up to my cable machine is soon simply too difficult for me to do the demonstration uh, pulling like this because of the mechanical disadvantage. It's too heavy for me. So I actually did have to hook up to my cable machine. And just to demonstrate what I'll be doing here, cable connects here, the same place that the muscle would on the arm. And then comes up here to where the shoulder would be. This represents the shoulder joint. Comes up here and just down, back up. All the effort is simply traveling through this cable machine into the handle I hold here in my arm. Now, in order for me to lift this, I just very simply push and up it comes. Now, I know that looks you know, not very impressive to you guys, but I assure you that is requiring quite a bit of force for me to do that. So, we already know that is not only four pounds. It is significantly more at this joint. However, what do you think is going to happen when I pull from a mechanical disadvantage or where the bicep actually pulls from? Well, we're about to find out. Same little scale here. And I'm just going to hook this up in between the table and the handle. And I'm going to push. Now, just to get it started, it requires 58 pounds of effort to get it started. Now, as I'm going through this, it's dropping down significantly, getting lighter. And at this point here, it's less, coming through the full range of motion to where it's weakest. I'll have to do something about the numbers in future videos, but for now, take my word on it. It's very difficult to get it started from this position, as I'm sure you can imagine. So, again, why does this relate to training? Doesn't my body just kind of automatically and instinctively understand these things? Can't I just not worry about it? No. You do have to worry about it. Yes, it's very important. So let's talk about why. First, I'll discuss the perfect bicep curl. I can do it very briefly. There's only one bicep curl you need to do. Why is that? Because there's only one perfect one. End of story, very simple. Now you can do this with dumbbells, you can do this with cables, you can do this with sandbags, water bottles, you know, whatever the hell you feel like. The thing is, gravity's pushing straight down. Long as your resistance is some form of weight, at the end of your lever, you can perform correct bicep curls. A correct bicep curl, very simple. Your elbow, needs to be 10 degrees in front. 
Now, what 10 degrees looks like, if you're curious, you get one of these guys, put it just like so, and you simply just take it 10 degrees out. I'll step in, you can see what that looks like, okay? Very simple, when I'm talking about degrees, that's what I'm talking about. So, I'm gonna do an exercise, which will be obviously exaggerated, but it's for effect. So you can see good bicep training versus bad tra uh, bicep training, but very exaggerated, so you understand the concept. So, let me just bring my attention over here. Now, I'm going to ask you if you've ever seen somebody do this exercise. I mean, I really doubt it. But have you ever seen someone doing bicep curls, lying on a bench, with their arms like so, and curling their weight like this? Have, have you ever seen somebody calling that a bicep curl? No, of course not. They would be calling it a, a tricep extension, a skull crusher perhaps. Uh, why? Why is that? Because uh, the tricep is the muscle working. Even though the bicep or the arm is going through that motion, this obviously is not anything even slightly like a resistance curve for the bicep, even though the bicep is moving like normal. Well, let's just change the angle. Have you ever seen somebody doing a bicep curl like this? Where that a, a 45 degree angle? I mean, probably you have, but this is a 45 degree angle in my elbow. Okay, so you get it. So it's still not so good. Take this all the way up. How about this? How does this look? Looks much better. You do see people doing this, obviously, because they feel the bicep working. However, this is what people do wrong. They'll take out the first part of the movement, and they'll just move super rapidly. I mean, we're not we're not going to talk about eccentric loading, concentric loading, none of those. The point is simply to show you that there are obviously good and bad resistance curves. That's all you need to understand. There are some which are good or productive and efficient, and others which are not. It's pretty simple to understand. So, I know I'm only talking about the bicep, but the thing you guys have to understand is every single muscle in your body works this way. For example, your hamstrings, these muscles back here, they are identical to the bicep. Identical in every way, basically, except it's on the back of your leg. If you're doing a standing hamstring curl, like so, what do you think you're doing? You're doing a bicep curl for your leg. Why is it that when you do a standing hamstring curl, you struggle with very light weight? Why? Well, you're struggling because it's hard. Why is it hard? Because it's a proper resistance curve. Therefore, you can't use big weight. Now, again, we're not talking about eccentric loading in this video, but if you then take that very light weight, you rapidly raise it, and then you lower it four times slower, which is the proper way to do it, which no one does, because it's much harder to do it that way. I don't care what sport you're training for, this is the proper way to train your muscle. There is only one proper way to train every muscle. Now, when the muscle is pulling straight up, mechanical advantage gets easier. All the way down here, mechanical disadvantage. True for every muscle in your body. A muscle can only pull from insertion to origin. Remember the refrigerator. True to every muscle in your body. No exceptions to these rules. None. I hope I have significantly blown your mind, but if I haven't, I'm going to blow your mind with one more. I'd like you to answer in the comments. I'll give you a 15, 20 second pause to shout out the answer out loud or to type it in the comments. There's a reason I chose to use rubber bands when doing this demonstration. Not because they're red, although that would be a good reason. No, it's because it's one thing about the fitness industry I really can't stand other than the lies and the misinformation. It is the excessive use of resistance bands. So why don't one of you guys tell me in the comments, what's my problem with resistance bands? 
Why do I hate resistance bands? Somebody tell me. I'll, I'll wait a couple seconds. Here's my problem, if you haven't already guessed it. What is a resistance band? It's a rubber band. What does a rubber band do? When your muscle is strongest at its mechanical disadvantage, the resistance band is providing zero resistance. As your muscle gets weaker, the resistance band provides maximum resistance increasingly. What's wrong with that? It is exactly opposite the muscle curve. It is exactly opposite what you want. I have no idea why these are even being used. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense, but a topic for another time. I'll make another video just about that. Suffice to say, I hope I blew your mind, guys. And uh, of course, go to www.castlinprogress.com. Check out my site, guys. You'll thank me later. Guys, train correctly.